It's April 24, 2016, and we want to know, is a specific salad going to be the root cause of the DCU's downfall? Mr. Biscuits may be dead, but are we all ready for the coming of Senor Galletas? All this and more is coming up now. It's another episode of the DCR. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny, and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Strut Citizens Radio. everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the DCR. I am your host, Sean Lamont, comic book reader extraordinaire, and I'm joined, as always, by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Brian Glein. Hello, sir. Hey there, Sean. How are you today? I'm all right. We have many kids in the house today. There are. And they're, and they're all running around and screaming, so we give pre-apologies. So we hear a stampede in the background. <laughs> it is not baby elephants. That would be much cooler if we had a, a bunch of baby elephants here. Be adorable. Yeah. I, I would Stinky. probably just stop the show and just start wrestling the baby yeah. elephants. So maybe it's wrestling. a good thing. Wrestling. That's what you do with baby elephants, don't you? you they, know, they always want to sit in your lap. and Giving, you're them, like, giving oh. them stuff to grab with their yeah. tiny trunks. Peanuts. Yeah. Is that yes. what you give them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but we are here to talk about comic books, not baby elephants. Aww. Unless there's a comic book about baby elephants. Are there any baby elephants in your books? Not that I can think Distinct of. Distinct lack of baby elephants in my books as yeah. well. So uh, why don't you tell the lovely folks what we are going to do, though? We're going to be spoiling all of the comics that came out in DC's DCU line over the past week. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about plot beats, character development, storylines, and mm-hmm. uh, we're going to basically spoil everything. So consider yourself forewarned. There are spoilers ahead. Um, I think that's all we have at the front. I'm going to do our warning stuff at the back, but we are yeah. going to take a bit of a quicker pace. Uh, we're going to try to get a couple mini shows in for the month of May while I am out. So we're going to try to compress this one, get a couple of those recorded maybe. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah. And uh, we will go from there. So without any further ado, let us jump into this week's books. All right, Superman. Superman. He's not just a man. He's a Superman. Yes. Yeah, I mean... I. I think that's really all we need to say about it. Mm. Uh, so next up, uh, oh, more Superman. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I got Action Comics number 51, which is all about Superman and the problems he's having. That problem being he's kind of dying. He has been abused quite a bit. This, the Superman that was introduced with the new 52 when it relaunched, uh, he's he's been exposed to a lot of kryptonite, punched by his own deity, um, just a lot of bad things have happened, and his cells are kind of like, screw you, Superman! <laughs> we're out of here! We're, we're killing this thing off! And uh, he's doing his farewell tour, but there are a bunch of other things also happening around him as he's dying, and we'll cover those here first. Uh, first off, there's an ex-convict that has been hit by the quote-unquote spirit of Superman. That's not what they're calling it. That's just what we're calling it. It was some glowy light that kind of flew into him, and then he, he exploded and came out looking like Superman, and he's like, hey, I'm Superman, I got Superman powers, so of course I'm Superman. But he also seems to have some sort of uh, split personality thing going on, where there's the ex-convict personality and another personality that seems to believe it is actually Clark Kent. So when quote-unquote Clark Kent shows up at the Daily Planet to go to work and punches the guard in the throat who goes, hey, you're not Clark Kent. He goes, yes, I am. (laughs) And punches him in the throat and then goes up to his desk where he proceeds to incinerate the security guards who come to arrest him. Uh, He is unfortunately taken down by Lois Lane when she tasers him in the back. Ah, my only weakness, tasers (laughs) in the back. And he crumples to the ground and... uh, they go, we should we should probably call Argus about this guy. I, I don't know who he is, but that's clearly not Clark Kent. Yes. Uh, we're, we're fairly certain about that one. We understand we didn't know Clark Kent was Superman, even though he kept jumping out windows and running into closets, and then Superman would come out of the closet. Yeah. You'd think we would have put that together, but we didn't. Investigatory so. <laughs> journalist. So we're, we're going to assume this time that this actually isn't Clark Kent. I mean, he... The spotlight crew was not working on Clark Kent. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's where that storyline ends. So, uh, elsewhere in China, remember those Zodiac monsters? The mm-hmm. bear, or I'm sorry, the ram and the dragon and the, the, the different Zodiac symbols yeah. that attacked Superman last issue. Well, they have returned back to their master, a Dr. Well, Omen. Well, well, one has returned back to his master. One has returned back to his master, Dr. Omen, in China. And apparently he was successful in his goal because all it was was to get a blood sample from Superman. So he's like, look, I got blood, Superman blood on my dragon hand. And she goes, okay, well, we'll just chop your hand off and uh, we'll get that blood sample. Uh, so just put your hand here. And he's kind of like... You'd think in this highly sophisticated laboratory we have... Where you created a dragon man. (laughs) We have some other way to get blood off of a hand. I mean, like a sponge or something. Almost anything, really. I could just smear it on some slides. I mean, whatever you need me to do. Uh, But they take his hand off, and he goes kind of sadly off to the lab to get a new hand grown. Which I guess if you could do that, it's not that big of an ordeal, but... Personally, if I were a dragon monster in a highly advanced laboratory, I'd be like, I, I just, I feel like you're cutting corners here. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least hands. You're at least cutting yeah. hands here. <laughs> uh, now, let's talk about Superman, because he is doing his farewell tour. He's going around and talking to everyone and saying, yeah, kind of dying, uh, doing the whole just last wishes thing and, and, and having that last conversation with the people that are important to me. I already talked to Lana Lang. I uh, already talked to Lois Lane, and uh, now I need to find my cousin, Supergirl, but my, oh my, where could she be? As you said last week, surely I hope she is not trapped in some sort of death machine somewhere, and as we see, yes, she is in fact trapped in some sort of machine in National City! National City! National City! Uh, and he flies in and saves her. It's in the DEO headquarters there, and smashes hmm. up the machine. Hmm. I know, it's it's almost like... There's something they're referencing here, but I'm yeah. just not getting it. I'm just not getting it. Uh, but he smashes up the machine, picks her up, and flies her away. And as soon as they get out of the building, she's like, what? No, no, I wasn't in any danger. Jeez, I was losing my powers, and they were helping me. You're not my dad, Clark. Jeez. <laughs> and uh, he goes, oh, well, I completely misread that situation. I may have been projecting. I had just made a statement about death machines and you, and... Uh, I saw you in a machine, and, you know, one nice. thing led to another. Assumptions. My bad. You know what happens when I do that. I'm Superman, <laughs> so I'm not allowed to say it, but you know. Uh, so he flies her back, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And she explains, yeah, when I was losing my powers, I was under the care of the DEO. They were helping me, like, juice up or at least try to regain my powers. But it appears that had something to do with Vandal Savage and him bringing that meteor so close, and that was what was having an effect on my powers. So... I'm getting better now. Isn't that cool? Super awesome. But I do owe the DEO. They they help me out, so I am going to be working with them quite a bit in the near future. Just you know, toss that out there because you know for uh, future storylines that maybe I might have in a book of my own in the future. Mm-hmm. I just want to let people know that I'll be working with the DEO, much like maybe other iterations of my character that you have seen elsewhere. Yeah. Uh. So he goes. Okay. I well, saw, saw Cameron Chase was there. Yeah, that was fun. I, that yeah. was pretty cool. Cameron Chase was uh, the DEO mm. uh, liaison for, yes. and uh, he goes, "Well, I I kind of did have something to tell you. I know you were just mad at me and everything, and I don't want you to feel guilty about it, but uh, I'm kind of dying. I'm gonna die like any day now. So I kind of wanted to see if you would take over as Superman, uh, my role, you know, protector. You can join the Justice League. You can do things like that. Just help the people of Earth because I won't be here to do it." And she is kind of uh, overwhelmed with that. That's not really my deal. I was leaving that for you. I'm a teenage girl. I'm still trying to find my way. Um, that's putting a lot on my shoulders there, Superman. He's like, oh, don't worry. I'm, I've, I've got other things for you. And they fly up to the Fortress of Solitude. And he's like, I'm going to give you the fortress. There's a zoo over there. I just put up these new statues. I know these aren't your parents either set, really, but I just put in the one set. If you yeah. can leave them up for a while, that'd be really cool. Uh, I think there's some pin art robots around here somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like home. It's just like... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she goes, I don't know, Clark. This is still... You're asking a lot you bought of a me. zoo. You're taking this Matt Damon fandom way too far, <laughs> Clark. Uh, and, and he goes, well, it's not like I'm going to have it so you do it alone. I'm always going to be there for you. And he pushes the button, and the giant hollow head computer interface is now Clark's head instead of the 
amorphous blob head. I mean, who did they have before in there? Jor El. Well, yes, yes. It, it's in the not, movies, at least. Yes, in the movies, it was Jor El, and now it's Superman in this one, and it's like, oh, it's like a passing of the torch, yes. so to speak. That's kind of cool. That would actually be a very interesting story if I believe that that's where they would possibly go with it. I don't know if they won't. Yeah, well, I guess we'll I see. don't know if they won't. I think having too many Supermans around is is bad for business. Um, Flash can get away with that because of all the time travel stuff. I think you really only want one Superman's flying around, yeah. although they're introducing more know, they've, Supermans. They've, as they've, we they've, they've, they've gone very counterintuitive to that quite a few times in the past. So. That is true. That is true. And now that we have red Supermans and possibly blue Supermans and mm-hmm. and Lionhead Supermans and Anthead oh, Superman, Only Lionhead <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Uh, so as they're about to leave, she agrees. Fine, I'll I'll do my best. I can only tell you that much. And they're walking out the door, and as the door opens, standing there in the middle of the Arctic is Wonder Woman, sword and shield drawn, and she's just screaming at them like, "Clark, when the hell were you planning on telling me?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, boy, oh, awkward. Ah, oh, yeah, man. I had my list of most important, and man, <laughs> maybe I should have put you a little higher there." <laughs> Uh, what's really even more awkward is last time all of them were at the Fortress of Solitude was when the during the whole L storyline when it was Wonder Woman versus Supergirl in the Fortress of Solitude and they ended up punching the crap out of each other. So yeah, yes. even more so, it's like, oh man, oh, man, I can't show up here without her showing up. <laughs> it's just just every time I come up here, is this what I'm inheriting, Clark? Does she just show up like this all the time? <laughs> So, obviously, Superman, Wonder Woman, we're going to get the... the. I mean, obviously, they had to save that for the Superman, Wonder Woman issue. Oh, yes, exactly. I know you keep making the jokes that he's going in order of his... Of most important, yes. Most important, but That's it's because Lana was number one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in the order of the books of those characters mm-hmm. yeah. and where they were... And where the release schedule was. Yes, yes. yeah. So, Super da. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what'd you think? You read it, obviously. Oh, yes. I've been, I'm enjoying the storyline quite a bit. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. It's a, it was a slower issue of the three. Mm-hmm. Um which isn't bad because it is kind of a farewell tour. We we still don't know exactly what's going to happen to the Supermans. Let's get, everyone, the let's get everyone back up to speed on Kara. You know? Yeah, and and it's getting all of his supporting cast. It's it's like an eight issue. Hey, here's everyone that's important to Superman right now, and uh, he has a lot of lady friends. He does. I'm just saying, he has a lot of lady friends out there. If only you got to keep your options open. If only there was some sort of doctor scientist in the middle of the Earth. That he has to say oh. farewell to. <laughs> Didn't she get folded into like a different reality or something? Well, there was like ten thousand of her. Remember, everyone well, yeah. looked like her. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some spares laying around. Oh, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah. So I doubt. We'll I, see I hope he goes her. and visits his old blog. Oh, Clark, he just sits there like so blog. We had some good times. <laughs> Remember that time when everyone kept jumping no. off the se- roof of a building because they were mind controlled and I kept flying them up to the top only for them to jump off again? Ah, <laughs> oh, those were good times. <laughs> uh, I just want Cat again. But you know. Yep. Well, hopefully Cat gets a more in the spotlight role in the new Supergirl book. If Maybe. they're going to do that, have her kind she of a. a uh, Clark Carapolis? No, K- Cat Cat. Yeah. Caropolis, I don't know. yeah, yeah. Maybe Cat will buy out a coffee shop, and that'll be the coffee shop that Kara's a barista at. And but she was just a barista last week. Well, I mean, she could be a barista again in okay. the future. It's not like she's it a would, hot it, girl it, it, or it, something. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change the fact that she was a barista last week. <laughs> Still would not. Move on, move on. Right. That meme is so dead. It's not even Superman, funny. Lois, and Clark, number seven. We are... Catching up on the uh, secret history of the Lois and Clark from the previous continuity. Yes, been, before the New Fifty Two reboot. Been, yes, they've been living in the, they've been living in the New Fifty Two thanks to the wackiness of convergence. All right, we, so we start off with a little quick flashback to within the amorphous five years ago. Ooh, uh, we're a little John. Uh, they they're going underneath the name the Whites, Lois and Clark White, uh, and little John White is playing with his Flash and Superman action figures and talking about how it would be. Not fair if Superman was faster than the Flash because it's all he's got. It's all he's got. Let him be faster than Superman. Well, you can make whirlwind arms and yeah. uh, and vibrate a lot. Mm-hmm. Not like Vibe, though, because that's no, all he that's, has. That's all he has, yeah. <laughs> we really don't want to take anything away from Vibe whatsoever. <laughs> Where are you, Vibe? <laughs> I am also a great breakdancer. I, the Flash. And he's yes. like, no, no, come on. <laughs> 
I can pop and lock. Ah! <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt. I was catching up on all of the Flash episodes. Well, I'm, and the, I'm running behind myself. But. Well, they have an episode where they go to the dance club and uh, Cisco is out there dancing. I was like, here it comes. Here it comes. And he's the worst goddamn oh. dancer. And I was like, come on. How can you take that away from him? Yes. <laughs> All right, so back to the current now, uh, where Lois and John are finding out that John has superpowers by escaping from a burning shed, um, and nothing hurts him. It's like, don't touch that doorknob. Haven't you watched every single ch- television <laughs> children's programming warning ever? And he's just like, oh, why? It's, right. it's, a, uh, it's a doorknob. Throw, I yeah. just opened it. I'll just kick off the wall here, and, yeah. and we'll leave. Is, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, so meanwhile, while not saving them, uh, Superman is dealing with Black Rock, the official supervillain of Badass Nation, uh, the, <laughs> t- the television program that hasn't happened yet. Uh, I bring this, probably, I probably could have completely skipped over this, but uh, I got a Calamity John Morris. He's an artist I like. He has a little book he did for the 75th anniversary of Superman okay. called Villains of Steel. Okay. And it was fun going through with like all these like weird, obscure supervillains. It's like... Oh, Black Rock is an old character. It was literally a supervillain that was created by a television network so they could have outlandish news stories to broadcast on their news shows. Touche. <laughs> at one at one point they gave the Black Rock to an entertain a local television entertainer named Les Vegas. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so Old continuity Superman takes out BlackRock, destroys the video footage, and gets very mad about reality television like an old man. <laughs> you kids, in my day, we had real shows. There were scripts and live studio audiences. There were shows about <laughs> cops who rocked. <laughs> are you a bad boy? What are you going to do when they come for you? <laughs> <laughs> so after he does that, he saves John and Lois from Intergang, who were still outside of the burning shed with, like, guns and stuff. <laughs> we're like, you know... Like you can't just tear off the tear off the. We didn't just. We're not like you know James Bond villains. We're just gonna leave you in the burning room to escape. We're still well, gonna, that laser should take about an hour before it gets to yeah. him. Uh, brunch? Anyone for yes. brunch while we wait for that? I've got finger sandwiches. <laughs> he saves them. He flies off, and uh, they have to have the talk with John. Uh oh. He's like, oh geez, man. I know we didn't buy a whiteboard because we're trying to keep a low profile. But like one could really come in handy right now. Uh, so, son, do you understand parallel universes? Like, yeah, Dad, I saw the Lego movie. Kids these days are pretty good with that sort of stuff. Okay. <sighs> well, all right. In well, my I'm- day, that blew people's minds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Superman from a different continuity, so you're basically Superboy. Cool, right? Yeah. Uh, then don't be like any Superboys you've seen yes. thus far. <laughs> but I learned it from watching them. Uh, when suddenly Superman has disastrous visions, he's like, oh, crap, my crossover senses are tingling. I got to go deal with that. We will talk about this later. So Superman goes f- to fly off to do the uh, the Super League story, I suppose. That's I would assume so as well. And uh, meanwhile, Hyathis, the high panala of the Alstair system, is still looking for the Oblivion Stone. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> that is some, uh, some dedicated searching going yeah. on in this book. Does yeah. she- How many pages do they get? Maybe three. They Maybe might, three. It might be one more page than usual. But yeah, she um she gets it from Hank Henshaw. But wouldn't you know it? She looks at it and she goes, "It's only part of the Oblivion Stone." Ah, crap. We got a <laughs> we got a real Inuyasha situation here. <laughs> I wonder where the other part is. And we smash cut to the Fortress of Solitude, which has the uh the mom and dad statue. So I'm assuming it means it's our Superman has found the other half of. Gotcha. The Oblivion. As soon as you said that, Inuyasha is the first thing that popped into my head, <laughs> where she's going to finally put it together and then just drop it. And it'll break. <laughs> shattered- and be like, oh, no, back in the beginning. <laughs> oh, no, again. this bird stole it. Then someone hit with an arrow, and it shattered into a million pieces and scared across the countryside. No! <laughs> it's really windy out. It flew all the shards all over the place. <laughs> oh, man, that's like another 200 episodes at least. <laughs> God damn you, Inuyasha. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese animation scheduling. <laughs> Uh, if those are apparently the characters we're going to be getting in I Rebirth. I find that odd. Really? I, I don't know. It's like an interesting story, but it seems a little, a uh, couple steps backwards. Like, I like these, this, the new Superboy is kind of fun. Yeah. But I don't, it just seems now, like. Now picture this Superboy it, teamed up with Damien, though. Oh, yes, I know. I'm pretty sure we, we've we pretty much established that's what the Super Sons book is going to be, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. and, and. Can you see where the personality... Oh, yeah. That is great. Like I said, like we'll have the cool Superboy, but I feel like saying, ah, the Superman that you you may have enjoyed for the past couple of years, 
eh, forget about him. We're going to bring back the old one. But I, 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 I can and, and see the, that. And, and the continuity, bu- and the continuity behind it makes it even more confusing for someone picking up a book. It's like, oh wait, this is the old one, but there was another one who showed up and died. It seems confusing to me. Okay, okay. It seems like it seems like if if you if you're gonna do if you're gonna do the new Fifty Two reboot, go whole hog and make it you know your ultimate universe. And if that's the only thing you're gonna have, you may as well stick to it. Well, I, I don't mean, know. It, we've had what twenty years of multiple Supermans, though. Very of, true. Of uh, Earth Two well, Superman depending, depend, and uh, Pre Crisis Superman. Well, depend, and, depending on what time period you're reading from, yes. Yeah, I mean it's been a while at least. It's, yeah. it's not like this is a hey, we should try this out. It's been that way, status quo for quite some time, and now we're just getting our new version of it, where we have a Pre Crisis Superman and we a Post Crisis Superman. We still got multiple Clarks and multiple Loises and Lois we do, and author we do. acts, and it's it's good. I find that maybe is perhaps a way to put up a big red X against new readers. Okay, fair enough, fair so, enough. I think it's a good idea me. because I think you're... I understand Batman is the biggest draw. Yeah. And Superman is, is probably a close second, and you have things like that, but these are old characters. Do you, I don't want to say they are past their prime, but... The people that are still really into those characters are are mostly your your older crowd. Yeah, I mean it's it's people like us. It's people like uh, that have been reading this for decades. They have the history with these characters, especially well, I'm this young Superman. at heart, Sean. <laughs> I, I understand that, but if you have it where you have these characters that are now in the role of parents and stuck doing these things, like they're trying to balance work with their kids and all of the, I mean. These yeah. are these characters aimed towards that market I can, share. I can see that. And yes. then you have other characters that are kind of the younger, more hip, i.e. your your Red Hoods and your your Arsenal and uh, Starfire and stuff like that. Yeah. It'll be like your 20s type yeah. era. And then yeah. you'll have your Teen Titans era type thing. I mean, they're straightening their lines. If they can find a way to actually you know, make like an age bracket for certain groups of characters, that would probably be great. Yeah, and, and it doesn't mean you have to read your age bracket. Yeah. I'm just saying mm-hmm. you'll have things that people can relate to more in these specific phases of their lives. Yes. And, and that was one of the main things that I guess everyone hated about the New 52 was they got rid of that that uh, mentor relationship where you had like the – the Jay Garricks and the 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 old guard that were out there that fought in World War Two, yes, and and they were just kind of like ah, you kids today and your silly crap. And now they'll have that again, just in a different format. So I I think it's a good idea personally, and I I kind of like these characters. So we'll have to see. I also yeah. like New Fifty Two Superman too. So yeah. I, I don't want him to die either. I just don't know. Yeah, and it seems like they're pushing that he's going to die so hard. It's yeah. like, wait, is that? You can't do it now, right? Yeah, you're at least gonna wait a little bit yeah. for the rebirth book, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's pick up the pace yep. a little bit more. Going on, uh, Robin, son of Batman, number eleven. Uh, Ray Fox and Ramon Box doing, oh, hey. doing a nice job. Box and Box. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so Damien is trying to stop Seren Darga. From replacing all the Year of Blood artifacts to their original homes, because if he does, he resurrects the Luun Darga, oh, the, of course. S- the sworn <laughs> enemies of the Al Ghuls. It makes perfect sense. Of course, of course. Uh, Talia is also after them, and she has Maya, uh, a.k.a. nobody, with her. Uh, they're currently well, That's in gr- just mean. She's somebody. <laughs> I know. They're currently in Gorilla City, trying to put a helmet on an altar. And uh, just as it looks like Damien is about to be killed by some Lundarga acolytes, who should show up to save the day? But Batman, Dad, oh, he, hey. you're alive. But now the bad guys are gonna win because you saved me. It's okay. I just needed to save you. I know it was odd that I came back from the dead and didn't say hi, but you know things happen. <laughs> so, so nobody grabs onto Seren as he teleports away. So she's with him. And now Batman, Talia, and Damien have to team up to stop him from using his last art of the last artifact on Dinosaur Island. Uh oh. Mom, Dad, can you save arguing for five minutes so we can <laughs> save the world? We, well, yeah, but only if we're going to save the world. Uh, hey, Damien, as soon as we ditch old mom, can I introduce you to new mom? <laughs> How do you feel about our teachers? You get along with and don't murder them, right? He's like, uh, I'll talk to you about that later, Dad. <laughs> uh, Reddit was calling it the bat parent trap where he was just trying to get his mom <laughs> yes. and dad together again. <laughs> Uh, which is cute if why we, is there a second British Damien I don't understand <laughs> wait a minute wait, wait a minute is that we, just Alfred in a Robin costume <laughs> no, no hello no, mother 
How could you think such a thing? You don't even have a hand. Uh, I, I lost it, sir. <laughs> I mean, dad, I, sir. <laughs> I got better. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was fun as they're, as they're wrapping up towards rebirth and they're just letting the artists like, hey, draw gorillas, draw dinosaurs, have fun. You, that's the one thing about the Damien uh, led titles, even the Batman and Robin when Gleason was doing it. And uh, uh, now with this one, I know uh, who was doing the art on this one. Ramon Box? Yes, yes. I knew you had even told me. Uh, everyone that's doing art on the uh, on these Damien titles, they're just kind of like, have fun. Just, just draw yeah. some stuff. I mean, really. Want, man. <laughs> uh, the character is strong enough that he can force his way through story-wise to yeah. lead people through some bizarre art style choices. Don't worry about it. You Still do got you. got a pet <laughs> dragon man bad. <laughs> uh, but yes, the fact that it was now it's the, the Bat family mm-hmm. together once more. Pretty funny. Yeah. I, and... I, I kind of like Talia as, as the Batman choice, but I understand there may be some issues there. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know all marriages have issues, but they might have issues. Yeah. <laughs> like capital letters issues that they may have to work through. Uh, so next up, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, uh, number 51, baby Zeke is dying. Everyone's dying. Why is everyone dying? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, at, least, at least their arms are still attached to their bodies. That is true. Kudos, DC. <laughs> Kudos. Uh, Baby Zeke, the reincarnation of Zeus that we know as the daughter of Zola and, and Zeus. And we were like, oh, we like these characters. Well, he's dying because oh. back when the the gods overthrew the Titans, they signed a deal with Gaia, who was kind of a Titan herself. And to help overthrow the Titans, and then they ended up betraying her and locking up all of her children in various places. And now she has placed a hex upon the the God family, the Olympians, to basically kill them all. And the first one to die is Baby Zeke. It looks like so. Oh no! I better get out there and stop this from happening. And Wonder Woman has kind of signed on with Hecate, the goddess of black magic and sorcery and betrayal and bad ideas of supporting her. And she's really the goddess of everything. (laughs) And uh, she's already stolen the eyes from the bottom of Hera's pool, like the eyes of the Cyclopes, so she could do magic with them to try to save baby Zeke. And now she's off in Tartarus, the the hellish prison of the Titans that the... The land of sauce. Yes. A lot of fish there. A lot of Mm -hmm. fish. Uh, and she's trying to find one of the kids of Gaia. And as she's going through, this is a place of lies and deceit. And I obviously can't sell, spell because I spelled deceit with a P. <laughs> uh, man. Uh, it's a silent P. Yeah, silent P. Uh, and, but she's seeing images of all of her biggest fears. And we'll just run through this real quick. There's a zombie Zola clutching the lifeless blue, blue body of toddler Zeke. Uh, and like waving it around. And it's all like flopping around. Uh, and it's like, ah. Uh, Come on, I saw train spotting. I don't need to see this. Uh, and it, they're both screaming, Why did you abandon us? She's like, Oh, that's unnerving. I don't want to deal with that. So she runs to the next room where it's all of her childhood friends mocking her because she can't spar with them because she's made of clay and the little girl version of her, like her hands keep melting and dripping and she's all like half formed from clay. Like, Come on, guys. Chunk want play too. <laughs> And uh, next room runs into Superman, who's being a clingy ex-boyfriend. Like, hey, I got my powers back. We can get together again. You don't have to worry about protecting me. I won't feel all inadequate because you're always flying in and punching my enemies in the face. We can make this happen. We could get married. We could have kids. And then the next fear is her being pregnant because she had already set aside having kids to do the whole Justice League thing. It's something you know she'll have to do later in her life. She can't do it now. She has to lop people's heads off yeah. instead and break people's necks. Uh, and then she ends up running away from him like, ah, too clingy, and into the next room where she finds Hera, who's all super pissed off about her betraying her. You stole the Cyclops' eyes. You betrayed me. You're just like your father, using my love as a weapon. And it's like, ooh, that's a good line. I like that. <laughs> uh, but then it actually turns out that that actually was Hera, and she actually was there because Hecate used the Cyclops' eyes to banish them both to Tartarus and trap them there. And now they're stuck in this maze of lies and they can't escape. And it's like, ah, well, I was just trying to help baby Zeke. I'm sorry. I was seeing a whole bunch of things. You were being like really mega, megalomaniacal and, and all like, I'll control Olympus. And she's like, it's a, it's the goddess of wizards and witches. 
It's misdirection. That's how they yeah. do things. Didn't you know that? <laughs> but what happened to his brother? Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> I saw the prestige. I know how this works. Uh, but instead, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just trying to help uh, baby Zeke. And Hera goes, okay, well, forgiven, but we got to figure out a way to get out of here so we can go kick Hecate's butt then and figure out a way to help baby Zeke. And she goes, oh, well, I have this lasso of truth that would probably help me see through all the illusions and lies. Probably could have just used that when I yeah. was on my way in. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, well, I'm just going to tie it on myself now and uh, let's just go. Oh, there's a door. Okay, yeah. let's go. Come on. <laughs> and they bust out the doors and she goes, Hera, you fly back to Mount Olympus and make sure good everyone's good there. Good thing she got the lasso from off of the front of Tartarus. Yeah. She just kind of <laughs> lightly tied together. It's like, that'll keep the door closed. <laughs> Actually did the bunny ears knot instead yeah. of a, a real knot. So Around just... <laughs> the tree, through the hole. There we go. She actually even did reference when Deathstroke came in and was like, we should really put some guards on these doors. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, learning from Tomasi, referencing yeah. some th- everything that, it ref- that happened to your character. Good job. Good Way job. to go, Finch. And uh, so she goes flying off to go confront Hecate at the Gaia temple and sends Hera back to Mount Olympus. She shows up at the temple. Hecate is nowhere to be found. So she flies on back to Mount Olympus and goes, hey, couldn't find her. I, I don't know what's going on. And then notices that everyone's kind of like crying and standing around this box. And she's walking up like, uh oh, uh oh, what's going on here? And Hera in tears turns around and goes, we were too late. And we see that Zola has died and she is in a casket and they're having the funeral for her right then and there. Aww. I'm really hoping she's still in Tartarus and this isn't a clear the board for Rucka before he comes on to yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh. you, you put these characters on a shelf, I don't have a problem. Olympus is very big. You could just have like a, yeah. a daycare center in the basement. Or, well, I guess... You know, Hephaestus Forge is that. Yeah. Maybe a floor above. Well, yeah, the, the kids might like the forge. Yeah. The babies might love the forge. It, it's good for them. Make them uh, sturdy. Smelt things. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be sturdy mm-hmm. after that. And uh, yeah. everything will be fine. Imagine a, a Hephaestus Forge binky for the baby and everything. Yes. It's just like. Grrr! The baby of Olympus. <laughs> uh, I actually enjoy the issue. I, I know it's kind of a divided thing. It was an unfair position for her. She came in after Azarello and Chang's run. Yeah. And, and, and it was a rough first issue. I'm not going to lie. That first issue was a, holy crap, where do I go from there? That's a, that was the end of the trilogy right there. Yeah. And now I've got to start something new. And no one really likes that I'm here instead of the last team. Well, hmm. guess I'll figure something out. Yeah. Water. Hey, water. What do you guys think of water? <laughs> What's the deal with water, everybody? <laughs> Magnets. How do they work? <laughs> Magical. Um, but after those first that first issue or two, I think she's found her way, and I, I've I've quite enjoyed her run so far on it. So I just want to toss that out there. All right. Wrap up the half. On to Flash number fifty. The Flash has been arrested by the Rogues. Oh no! It's the best first page ever. <laughs> uh, they were deputized by Police Chief Fry, who hates the Flash on account of him being a menace. Oh, you know <laughs> that damn Spider Man, <laughs> Flash. I mean, uh, that damn Flash! <laughs> so he gets taken to H- Iron Heights for processing, but Henry Allen, Flash's dad, hears about it on the radio and calls in a favor from his prison guard friend who busts Girder loose to help. Oh. Always the smartest choice. Yeah. Girder and Tarpit, your mm-hmm. go-to, like, mm-hmm. schlubs that are always in Iron Heights. Yes. <laughs> So Girder says, hmm, this may be too hard for just me, a guy made out of steel girders. So he lets out Overload, the guy who hears buzzing in his ears due to energy. So he sucks all the energy out of the prison and lets it go, shorting out all the restraints, which lets the Flash go free so he can save Fry to prove that he's not a bad guy. But he also lets out most of the villains in Iron Heights. Ah, Whoops. Whoops. Reset. (laughs) So the rogues were able to capture Flash originally because some mysterious benefactor gave the trickster a robot arm that could subdue his powers. Uh, this is also the guy... Uh, per- I keep forgetting that Gorilla Grodd ripped his arm off. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is also the guy providing a Speed Force drones to the city and who has a heat wave trapped in a tube in his secret lair. So he It's got- probably the safest place to keep a heat wave, though. Yeah. He is a, he is a little bit of a firecracker. Uh other places you can put him, but we won't talk about that here. <laughs> so uh, he got a new arm from the guy, and the rogues go after Flash to capture him a second time. Using all their powers together, they get a good jump on him, uh, but the drones show up, 
turn into guns, seemingly murder the rogues. Oh. A trickster's arm goes off on its own and causes Golden Glider to dissipate. Hey, whoa! And the mastermind behind all of this, the one who stole Heatwave's body from Gotham, who just had his drones blow a bunch of windows out to form the shape of a question mark. Why, it's the Riddler! Oh, hey, everybody! <laughs> Riddle me this! When does a flash not a flash? When he's dead? something I don't know. I'll come up with it later. <laughs> I got a month. I got it later. So uh, yeah. you're dead anyway. You don't really care. <laughs> yes. uh, Riddler is a mastermind. <laughs> but is Riddler going to join the rogues? I think he just killed them. Oh. Well, I don't like the Riddler then. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I, I automatically I realize am against they, they, the Riddler they, now. They, they could have been like knockout bullets or something, but I'm just like, uh, huh? Not gonna, gonna risk take, it. I am gonna, anti-Riddler now. Yeah, you're gonna, gonna take out my most favorite thing about the Flash, huh? Well, hmm, hope okay. you're not sticking around too long. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's also a cute backup where uh, Wally West learns he's got Speed Force powers during gym class. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on! He was climbing up the rope, and he just did it much faster than everyone else. Uh, now he, they're just messing with me. Now they're just yeah, messing with me. They're playing me. dodgeball. But he excuses himself to uh, go to the... Uh, he excuses himself to go back to the locker room because of all these weird changes. When the ghost of his future self from another timeline shows up in the locker room... That's ex- very normal. <laughs> ...to explain what happened. He's like, time travel, man. I'm not even going to explain why I'm here. Uh, uh, is there a whiteboard around here somewhere? No, there's not. It's the gym, oh, gym class. Uh, Don't they make plays here? Uh, there's always a whiteboard in the locker room. Yes. <laughs> so, he, uh, uses, so he uses his powers to stop the class bully from punching someone. Uh, it's a hard right turn to make him more like Peter Parker or maybe Miles Morales. Okay. After he's presented as a uh, gang-banging graffiti artist, Tokyo Drifting Street Racer. But uh, baby steps, I suppose. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Yeah. Still got a What about Bob? What about Bob indeed? <laughs> Do you like it though? Do you think it's a good turn or I, I quite just enjoyed too it, abrupt? Yes. I it, it was it was a little abrupt, but it was also a very well illustrated and it was it was a fun light hard story. It's like, oh, I can get behind this Wally West. Sure, sure. I mean as we said before, the, it's still, it's the still character be, learning their way as they first get the powers and the whole well the okay. I have powers. What am I going to do with them? It's yeah, I did like, like, okay, Flash is busy with his own crap. Your ghost from the future is going to show up and explain this to you. <laughs> so we can just get that out of the way right now. Uh, next time you see Flash, you could just let him know, though. Yeah, you already yeah. had the talk. You know all about yeah. it. Uh, whiteboards were there. Sure, just tell <laughs> yeah. him they were there. Otherwise, he's going to go get one. Yeah. You don't want to sit through mm-hmm. it. Trust me. No. I'm from the future. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah. Why do you think I'm here? I'm only here from the future to pres- preserve you from the whiteboard mm-hmm. future that you had ahead of you. So I still think it's gonna be a hard. It's a hard sell for everyone who grew up loving Wally or you know likes him from Young Justice. But it's a hey, give him a shot. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, I I hope people give him a shot because he's nice. Yeah, I I have a feeling the the montage next year or two of him coming into his own and learning his way and becoming a better person will be the just what he needs for people to actually start to embrace him yeah. instead of the I hate you Barry Allen kid that's always around and yeah. and his his aunt always trying to S- foist them off every spray, three seconds. spray painting all those nasty things about pigs <laughs> ah damn you uh but that's it for this half Brian what are you coming up have coming up in the uh, the second half Titans hunt poison ivy cycle of life and death and plant babies and uh, Martian manhunter with more babies. 100% more babies. Uh, I got Aquaman number 51. What do you feel about the FBI and Aquaman there, uh, Brian? Uh, Rizzo- uh, Rizzolian Isles are still there? Rizzolian Isles are yeah. back. They're going to be uh, supporting characters, it seems, moving forward. Well, then. Uh, I have Dr. Fate number 11, speaking of the kids that are learning their way. And last but not least, Harley's Little Black Book number 3, because it's another week, and we can't have a week without a Harley book. Yep. So hold on a couple seconds. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will zip on through those books. That we are. We got more books. More books to talk about. Starting off with Aquaman number 51. He is that aqua guy, that guy that lives in the water. Uh, having captured dead water, uh, who is a giant naga monster, 
uh, kind of a big fish monster thing, or, or at least the poor guy that is stuck sharing the body with the fish monster. It's some random dude named Mr. Payne that if he gets around water too much, he turns into this giant fish monster that kills people. So they brought him back to Spindrift Station where they're going to do, I guess, Atlantean waterboarding to try to find out why he's killing everyone. And Atlantean waterboarding is putting him in a room where there is no water and actually heat lamps to make sure no water gets in. I'm assuming that's what Atlantean waterboarding is. Uh, But they feel bad. They feel really bad because he seems to not know anything about what this monster did. He doesn't even know he turns into a giant monster. And they're like, okay, well, this is really awkward. We were kind of hoping we could figure out why you were murdering people. But I guess now we have to figure out why you're turning into a giant fish monster instead. So while they're having their conversations trying to figure out, Mara's talking to him and going down the list of people. Do you know this guy? Yeah, he was my old college roommate. Do you know this guy? Yeah, he was my coworker. Do you know this guy? Yep, my old college teacher. Is there anything in common with all these people? Yeah, they all slighted me very slightly, but I mean, not like big, just stupid little things. But other than that, uh, no, not really. And she's like, well, you murdered all of them as a, as a giant fish monster. So clearly it's your subconscious at the very least that's ha- causing you to murder all of them. And then finally she goes, uh, what about this lady? Do you know her? And he goes, yeah, that's my ex-wife, you know, the mother of my son. And then he goes, oh, no, 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 no. And she goes, yeah, you murdered your ex-wife as a giant fish monster. And he breaks down and starts screaming about how I was just working for this dude. Uh, what was his name? Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, Mortimer. Yes, Peter Mortimer. And uh, was doing some illegal salvage work with him. And, and next thing I know, I'm here. And you're saying I turned into a giant fish monster all the time. And oh, geez. Oh, that's horrible. And Aquaman goes, Mortimer, I know him, or as we know him, and he looks into the camera, the scavenger. And he goes, well, I'm going to go find the scavenger. Of course, Rizzoli and Isles are there, and they're all trying to help with the profile of a giant fish monster, like only the FBI can. Uh, they actually provide all the names of the the victims and their links to this guy and stuff like that. So they're there making their aqua puns. Not as heavy handed as last <laughs> month, but they're still there being goofy as all. Is hell. one dissecting and one detecting? No, neither are doing okay. either. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what Rosalie and Isles is about based on these posters on Google Images. It's not giving me anything. <laughs> it's it looks their, their method of solving crimes is well unique. Like what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a selling point here, Rizzoli and Isles. Come on. What's your elevator pitch? I mean, Institution, <laughs> evidence, crime solving's perfect pair. Come on. Nothing. No, that seems to be nothing. One has handcuffs, one has a scalpel. Okay, great. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> At least, at least something like Bones has a pretty quick pitch. Yeah, I mean that's a really easy p- elevator pitch right there. These are these solving aren't... crime is an art, and they're standing in front of some art. Okay, cool. Thanks, <laughs> Rizzoli and Isles. <laughs> Weekdays at ten. <laughs> two of a crime. I guess it's supposed to be like two of a kind. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, here's a here's an Avengers poster. Someone was made with all the female detectives from TNT together in one show. Man, man. That'd be a lot of detecting and dissecting. dissecting yeah. <laughs> All right, continue. I'm All not right. enough of this. So, well, now that everyone doesn't even need to watch Rizzoli and Isles, they know exactly what happens yeah. in that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as Arthur's tracking down the, the scavenger, swimming around trying to find him, uh, back at Spindrift Station, the Mr. Payne guy in the, the dry room feels really, really bad about his little kid, his little boy who's like eight, who now is essentially an orphan because his mom's dead and his dad's a giant fish monster and he cries and that one single tear as it rolls down his cheek is enough water to turn him into a giant fish monster <laughs> yep and uh he goes smash the human through. body is 90 percent like 80 no, percent no, water no, that no, doesn't no. that didn't do anything it but the, the tear that was okay gotcha yeah, it has to be outside so when they're all running around screaming that oh no water makes him stronger we have to make sure he doesn't escape the underwater station we have here or at least the beachside station uh, Mara goes, I know, I'll attack him with my water powers. weapons. Mm. Oh, crap. Mm. <laughs> but she dives in, and her and Merc are trying to contain him, while elsewhere, Aquaman finally tracks down the scavenger who shoots a bunch of torpedoes at him and then stomps him into the seabed because he has puzzled together a giant underwater mecha suit that uh, he is going to use to fight Aquaman with. 
Must have got puzzling these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a thing. It's a yeah. thing. I feel like I'm I'm going to keep up with the kids. I want to be hip. I want to be yeah. cool. I'm not a square. It's the bee's knees, Brian. <laughs> Twenty three <I>, could do, <laughs> as the kids say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's it's a it's it's a dial back from the humor of last issue. That's still there, just not as heavy, yes. not as zany, not as aqua everything. And uh, we get Mara is now the the leadership role. So she is she's ordering around like Merc and Garth, and that's her team basically. And Aquaman's off doing his own stuff, swimming around, being all zany and stuff, yeah. being very inept. Still, <laughs> still really inept. Best so, king ever. You know it. So next All up. right, Titans hunt number seven. Hunt, 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 All hunt. All right, hunt. so the Titans of old are learning of their secret history they don't remember and how it ties into Mr. Twister, an old man who takes baths. Uh, Lilith, the token red-haired, poorly named super team telepath, uh, calls in Diablo, a shadowy anti-metahuman task force, to deal with Mr. Twister. But as it turns out... Wait, Dia- is it an acronym-based organization? or is no, it- They don't say. It okay. might be. It's I'm, just I'm, Diablo. I'm, huh? I'm holding out hope. Yes. All right. I think so. There's another character named Diablo is going to be in a TV in yeah, a movie that's soon. A, yeah, that's a weird thing for them to just pop out there yeah. like that. As it turns out, Diablo specializes in dealing with old bath taking pirate scarecrow men. <laughs> well, and they e- and either they take him out when he's weak, or in this case, take out his pawns if he's already amassing power. It really is a boutique market out there. <laughs> I mean, there's something for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so because he's amassing power now. So, uh, D Daddy and Honey Bun are sent after Lilith and the uh, second and third tier Titans, and oh, that's they're horrible. They're robots or something. So, Cave Boy is able to spear Honey Bun through a weak spot, and Hawk takes out D Daddy, who's some kind of technomancer with a special connection to his bitch and Camaro. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. So, elsewhere, uh, Mad Mod, the head of Diablo, tries to kill Bumblebee, but she finds out that her clever nickname is actually her superpowers and avoids it. By buzzing around, or what does she do? She, like, she, like, she tries... She stings something? He, he, he tries does to... she hover around a flower for a while yeah. and then fly off? <laughs> Defying the laws of physics. I don't know. He tries to shoot her, and she kind of, like, vibrates off to the side. Whoa, whoa, so. whoa, whoa. That's vibes thing. We yeah, can't I know. just... We can't go taking she everything from she, her. <laughs> she's very good at... Dodging and evading things coming at her, whether so it's a is she more whether house it's, fly than bumblebee, whether it's really whether it's a hand to, that's swatting at it or what, I okay. don't know. Because I find hitting bees is a lot easier, very than, true, than hitting house flies. I've knocked more bees on the ground than flies yes, in my day. Yes, <laughs> chopsticks apparently are their weakness. If you if you're if you got those around, so they've all so all of these various titans like so we stopped Diablo, so we're all right because we're not trying to help Twister, so nothing's going to you know accidentally cause him to come back into power, right? Uh, but off at the mysterious twisting tower-shaped uh, organ, uh, the trinity of the Titans, Nightwing, Donna Troy, and Aqualad, ascend to the top while having weird feelings like they built this weird twister tower. Um, and they meet up with a near-dead hornblower, and they are finally confronted by Mr. Twister. Our kids, help me find me buried treasure. It's full of Werther's original. <laughs> help me find me bathtub, kids. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're finally going to get some uh, answers here, maybe. Ba- maybe. It seems like we're getting to that point where yeah. it's the, hey, I'm probably going to monologue for a minute here and fill you in on what's been yeah, happening what's actually in the last going four on, issues. Yeah. <laughs> That's like seven issues, dude. Oh, okay, well, sure, sure, seven issues. Seven. I forgot there was all that horn blowing there for a while. <laughs> yes. I did forget about that. Organs and blowers and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. People taking baths. <laughs> yep. Your books are weird, man. That's I all know, I'm saying. Right? <laughs> it's not even me being weird with it. <laughs> uh, next up, Dr. Fate number 11. Uh, his fate is almost sealed because he's only got one more issue after this one. <laughs> okay. uh, but after de-escalating some riots in New York outside of the UN building, when an, a visiting Egyptian general was there and all the people were rioting against his inhumane treatment of the people back in Egypt, uh, he kind of stopped those riots from going out of hand. And now he's been teleported to Egypt itself somehow in his efforts to stop this whole thing and is being held captive by a bunch of centurion apparitions and great caesar's ghost literally is yes. there holding him captive and uh, the ghost is kind of curious about dr fate like oh look at this this 
wizardly fellow here in front of me. What what is up with the helmet there? It looks like a like a Spartan's helmet, but but it's Egyptian. What 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 is happening here? What is what is the style you're going for? And uh, he's just kind of like, okay, uh, this is weird. You're the ghost of Caesar. All right. Uh, and then Caesar goes on to tell him about how every time someone utters my name, I grow stronger. <laughs> and, and I just picture back at the Daily Planet, just every single time, he's just like, yes, yes, more. Say my name again. Great Caesar's ghost. Great Caesar's ghost. <laughs> you're the only one keeping me alive. <laughs> well, that and every time someone orders the Caesar salad. Oh, yeah, and, you're right. Yeah, that was my and question. We got, we, yeah, we got to get a salad <laughs> named after us so that we can live forever. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, Paul Newman. Gonna live forever. No, right? Dressing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Some grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but after Dr. Fate tries to escape multiple times, Caesar's curiosity is replaced by his annoyance because this weird wizard Spartan dude keeps trying to teleport away. And uh, he goes, just kill him. He amuses me no more. And uh, they go to kill him. But he uh, goes, wait. A voice comes from the side where the Egyptian general that was at the UN before comes out and goes, I want his magical baubles, and all of you ghost people, you answer to me because I have this dagger here. And, ah, ha, 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 ha. and uh, they go, okay, fine, do what you're going to do. And the general tries to take the amulet off of him, and it burns his hand, and he goes, ah, oh, I can't get your toys, so uh, I'll have to figure out some other way to get it off of you. And that's when Dr. Fate finally figures out how he can use light to blast back all of the ghosts, and he does it to the centurions. But Caesar is a little bit stronger than all of these little ghost centurions, and he's about to lose when he realizes that the dagger the general has is the key to who's how he's controlling him. And he just goes, woogie, 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 and makes the dagger fly over to him, and then goes, hey, you're free to go, great Caesar's ghost. He's like, ah, I'm more stronger, but I'm going I'm to leave now. Thanks, man. Oh, you won, and he kind of flows away with the rest of his centurion ghosts. And leaving Dr. Fate to grab the general, put him in a net with a bunch of all the other magic baubles that he has, and goes flying off to drop him off at jail because the general is trying to sow discord so that all of the riots would happen in Egypt so that he could perform a military coup and take over the unstable government. And he had a plan. It just wasn't a very good one. So as Dr. Fate's flying away with him, he's like, yeah, things are looking up for Dr. Fate. I think I got this thing under control. I think I understand what I'm doing. Yeah, things are going my way, and then oh wait, is that is that my phone? Oh, let me let me check this real quick. Oh, I'm supposed to meet the dean at my med school because I haven't shown up to class for a month, and I'm about to be expelled. Well, I guess I'm just gonna be fate because Doctor Fate, yep. uh, not gonna pass my exams for that one. Okay, so. cool. Ankh eye tattoo, a red streak of red in my hair, a, a cool ankh shaped dagger. I'm yeah. just saying it's an option. Yeah, it's an option. It's out there. He could at least give it a go, see how it works for him. Because yeah. <laughs> the doctor thing may not be in the cards. Yeah. May not be in the cards for him. So it's cute. Again, it's that it's that kid learning his way. And the fact that his quote-unquote mentor is absolutely worthless is just like, you're never going to learn if you don't figure it out to yourself. <laughs> and he's like, ah, why are you even a mentor if this is what you're going to do? <laughs> yes. All right. Moving on to Poison Ivy, Cycle of Life and Death number four. Uh, Plant po- babies. Poison Ivy is Poison Ivy. Yeah. Ready I, for your book? Uh, yeah. No, no, no <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, so a good chunk of it is told from the perspective of Darshan, the cool punk epigeneticist that Pamela works with at the Botanical Gardens. we all Gardens. know. We yeah. all know one like that. That old, <laughs> that old trope. Uh, so it's fun. Catwoman just showed up, and her and Poison Ivy are making small talk about being supervillains. While Darshan is hanging upside down by uh, plant monsters trying to make sense of their, like, ridiculousness slash trying to justify why the hot redhead he has a crush on isn't. She's not really evil. I could totally be stepdad to these godless monster plant babies. (laughs) Poison Ivy made plant babies, in case you weren't aware. Yes, yes. Because, you know, easier that way. (laughs) Yes. There's also there's also a fun bit where Catwoman won't stop talking about Harley Quinn and Ivy is just all like, "Oh, good lord, is that all anyone talks about?" <laughs> I swear to God, every week, every week. <laughs> <laughs> so they try to get her stolen research back, and a bunch more of her coworkers have been killed by plant powers again. And the Gotham Botanical Garden is making their own illegal black market plant babies. Man, this really took off quickly. Yes. This is a lot like those uh, implant robots that just kind of pop up and all of a sudden there's just street corner markets. Yes. And they just uh, everyone has one or wants one within yeah. a 
day or two. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they can't make their plant babies right, but the one plant baby, or I suppose plant grade schooler at this point, is the one that accidentally killed all of her coworkers because she's got a connection to the green, just like Poison Ivy and Swamp oh. Thing, and she doesn't know how to control it. Oops. Yep. So she was just playing? This is like an inept toddler. I think it's more. I think it's more like they were like torturing her, like you know, ET style. I okay, suppose. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, Poison Ivy is super mad, and Catwoman's like, "Oh crap, Darshan, grab any knickknacks you really like off your desk because this place is going down. <laughs> I know how this happens." So they grab the plant kid and run away from the building as it plant explodes. Uh, they don't look back, which makes them super cool. But Darshan does, so you know, oh, well, you know, I mean, you know what's going to happen new. with him. He's new. Yeah, at he's this. new. Yeah. I mean, he'll he'll learn. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen one building plant explode. You've seen them all plant yeah. explode. Mm-hmm. He hangs out long enough and adopts these kids and yeah. becomes a stepfather. Eventually, he's going to get used mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. After their seventh house, mm-hmm. when it implodes in a plant explosion, uh, he'll be like, I'm, I'm just so sick yeah. of this, guys. It's Tuesday morning. I got to get to work. I don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. Quit plant exploding every house we pass by. <laughs> How many sick days have I used because I've got to call him the, the contractor? <laughs> yeah. uh, so... What do we want to talk about next? Um, you got any characters maybe you want to catch up on? Have we or? talked about Harley Quinn yet? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. But we can. I mean, if you want to. Only if you want to, Brian. Oh, yeah, go right ahead. Okay. Well, I got Harley's Little Black Book number three, which is kind of the Harley team-up book. The, oh, yeah, 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 The Harley teams up with somebody and does stuff. And while she has the London Legion of Superheroes visiting her, people like Pub Crawler and stuff like that, <laughs> a bunch of weirdos, uh... Spookums are about. There spookums. are also spookums about because I'm not corn spookums are they? <laughs> <laughs> no, just just regular spookums. Okay. Uh, because in nearby Coney Island, one of the attractions is about to get torn down, and the 1920s carny ghosts that live inside of it have to find one of the buildings that were around when they were cursed to be ghosts in the 1920s. And the last one left is the wax museum that Harley is now the. Ah, landlord. The of, yes, the the supervisor landlady of. So they go ooh and float on over Spookums into that building. But luckily for Harley Quinn, just that it happens that same night, she had also booked Zatanna to play the theater down on the what first are the floor. <laughs> so Zatanna is just like ah, Spookums, go away, Spookums. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Get out of here. And they go, ooh, they fly up to the next room where Harley's sleeping, and she's like, ah, spookums! And she starts shooting them with a shotgun, which does nothing. And Gotta the- fill it with rock salt first. Come on, <laughs> yeah, Harley. Jeez, did you watch any Supernatural? <laughs> uh, but poor London Legion of Superheroes aren't able to see the ghosts, so they just see everyone running around shooting things at the walls everywhere, and they're like, America's just jacked up. <laughs> These guns, I mean, jeez. <laughs> uh, but they aren't bad ghosts. They're just 1920s carny workers, and they needed a place to stay because they were cursed. And if they try to leave, if they they leave a building that isn't one of the original ones from when they were cursed, then they'll be captured by this demon that was some evil wizard back in the 1920s that summoned a devil, and it cursed him to be a demon, and it's been tormenting them, and it killed them in life when they left the island, and uh, now in death it still hunts them. So they're just trying to find a place to be safe. And both Zatanna and Harley go, well, we'll just go kill this demon guy then for you. So they go, tromp, 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 tromp. And they find the demon guy, and they find out the demon guy is just as cursed because he can't leave the area either until everyone's dead. So that devil, whoever it is that he signed a deal with, they're like, okay, well, we'll go take care of the devil then. Tromp, 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 Off to Hell's Kitchen. (laughs) Well, they open up this hell portal, and they jump through, and they come out the other side, and they're like, what horrors await us here on the other side of this portal? And they show up in like a... A five-star hotel swimming pool area where this, like, hunky, ripped guy is standing there in the pool just drinking and hanging out with all the succubuses. And they're like, oh, who do we have here? And and, uh, he goes, wait a minute, are you Harley Quinn? Oh, big fan of your work. You send people here all the time. Hear nothing but good things about you. Like, every week, literally every week, I hear something about you. And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I am the devil. And let me get this right. Nad Oided, N A D space I uh, or O I D I D. If you can put this together in Zatanna speak, that's Dan Dio backwards. Ah, <laughs> and uh, so he's going. Okay, well, wh- what brings you here to my little hellish domain? And they're like, well, it's not that bad, really. It's quite nice, I gotta say. And they go, well, we want you to break the curse on all these ghosts and spookums so that we can get a good night's sleep. 
Can you do that? And he goes, yeah, but we have to make a deal. And the deal is you, Harley Quinn, have to stay here for 30 days and satiate my every desire. And she goes, okay, well, that sounds cool. You're kind of hunky. Hubba, hubba, hubba. I'm down with that. And Zatanna's going, this is a bad idea. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. And she goes, ah, forget you. I'm going to do it. Do it. And uh, he releases the curse on the ghosts and sends Zatanna back home. And Zatanna's just like, ah. Whatever, it's Harley Quinn. I really don't care yeah. that much. I'm sure they'll have Harley's Adventure in Hell number one next week. Yeah. I'm not really that concerned about it. <laughs> and, uh, I'll she go goes, and hang out with my super team. I'm not allowed to see. You know how it is. <laughs> uh, she goes and does her magic show the next day. And right during the middle of the act, all of a sudden, a hell portal opens up. And Harley gets tossed out in like a, a like red a D- and like black... A- like a DJ Jazzy Jeff style. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then the demon lord is just kind of like, no, keep her away. I can't keep up with her. She's insatiable. And uh, they're like, okay, but you got to keep your end of the deal. And he's like, whatever. Just keep that crazy lady out of hell. And they go, okay, fine. And he kind of disappears. And the two of them are left to have uh, a freeze frame laugh and sunbathe on the roof while making sex in the city jokes together because I was a Tana. You're such a Miranda, Zatanna. Mm-hmm. You're such a Miranda. <laughs> And that's uh, Harley's little black book. little black book. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving on to Martian Manhunter number 11. I, I hate doing the Harley books as recaps because it's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't translate at all. And I feel stupid doing it every time because it's just like... You got. You just got to read it. I think I'm just going to start doing like three sentences synopsis for all the Harley books because or unless could, it's something like the one where she met up with the Joker and it's a... A reasonable a, a, conversation. A, 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 very, a very special episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unless it's something like that moving forward in the Harley books, I'm going to do shorter stuff because if that's your cup of tea humor-wise, you should be reading it. And it seems like everyone is anyway, so it, I'm, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels because I'm not getting across anything of the joy and fun in the book, and I'm just saying random words and kind of giggling to myself that I'm putting these sentences together and speaking them out loud. And I don't think that's working for anyone. <laughs> So next All up, right. Martian Manager number 11. A dying Mars is about to crash into the Earth. Uh, it's a Mars from the past that got teleported into our time. So Martian Manhunter and his other half, or I guess his other third at this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they are kind of dropping yeah, off yeah. like flies. Uh, Pearl is in charge of trying to save as many Martians as possible. So they're inhabiting giant Voltron mech bodies <laughs> to try to save as many of these Martians as they can. A uh, Pearl, who just thinks she's a super thief from Dubai living out her own alias-type show, is a little weirded out by having to become a giant robot. Understandably. Uh, Martian Understandably. Manhunter helps her morph her body to take control of said robot, and now they have to fly to Earth, and hopefully Daryl, Biscuits, and Alicia can get the magic shield down in time so they don't kill themselves while they're doing that. Well, I'm sure. that I mean, that's pretty yeah. capable hands there. Yeah. Um, what is that? Six hands right there i mean yeah, yeah. they should be fine well uh mr briscus is dead okay well four hands yeah. four hands <laughs> um alifak uh the bad guy has the mars baby and he's going to use it to remake mars in his own image it's mars baby it's the mcguffin okay the mcguffin okay. of all this just for the sake of <laughs> just kind of waves this, it yeah. around and like mm. mars baby <laughs> yeah so he's kidnapped alicia and is going to use her in a blood magic ritual uh, to do this because you gotta have blood for the blood magic, or else it's just magic, and that's boring. What if what if Maalafaak moves to Ismal? Oh man! I mean, he he'd be he happy knows, there. He would be very happy. There's there. blood pools for miles. I yeah. Mean, the, I mean, maybe the Red Lanterns might be a little mad if he keeps using it all up. But, but yeah, that at would the be, same time, it'd be very beneficial for his blood magic. Yeah, just send him there. Send yeah. him there, or that that. Uh, realm of the Red with Animal Man. That was with the Blood Seas and everything. Yeah. I mean, there's he and Bl- Brother Blood can, can hang out there, and yeah, uh, yeah. he could oh. do life aquatic style Zizu adventures <laughs> yes. in the Blood Sea and <laughs> right down the Hemoglobin Highway. All right, so he goes off to do that, and Daryl Wessel, the FBI agent uh, persona of Martian Manhunter, is trapped under a bunch of rocks. And he's there's a cave in. He's like, man, Mister Biscuits, we couldn't even make it to issue twelve. Uh, and then Mr. Biscuit's hand moves up and makes a little hand mouth. And he goes, I know, it stinks. <laughs> and, uh, and then Mr. Biscuit's hand gives Daryl the rousing pep talk he needs to remember that he's an alien and can shapeshift through the, the rocks and survive. Uh, so, Daryl, it's all right? It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and then Mr. Biscuits is still dead, unfortunately. No! I how know. do you have that be the 
ending role for him. I know. At, at the same time, it's kind of it perfect. It kind of is the perfect yeah. ending role for him. Yes. Uh, so as Malifak is about to kill uh, Alicia, Daryl's able to throw a spear through his head, killing him. Okay. <laughs> That was a lot easier than I thought yeah. it was going to be. He had to grab the spear. <laughs> Apparently, his only weakness is anything penetrating his body. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so a cave-in is about to kill the Mars baby, but Alicia, Alicia tries to sacrifice herself to save him. So the Mars baby uses its telekinesis to stop the cave-in. Turns out there are good people after all, since you're going to, you know, sacrifice yourself to save me. So I guess the world is worth saving. Uh, I'll open the portal for you. So the Phobos moon portal opens up, and a giant red shaft of life beams down to Earth, uh, shattering the magical barrier that Constantine and his magic friends had set up, <laughs> leading uh, John letting out one of his trademark bollocks, <laughs> and we will see what happens if we've just doomed the Earth somehow. Poor Constantine. <laughs> He's been in the background for like the last three issues yeah. now, just kind of running around like, ah, crap, Mars is going to crash into the Earth. This is way above my pay grade. Then he just tries to set up a force field, and he's like, ah, come on! <laughs> I like his little team that he built together. had both Demon and Sargon the Sorceress in yes, there. Yes, yes. Like, we have not seen her at all. No, no. She did kind of fall off the face of the earth there yeah. after, after a bit. But still, I, I kind of liked his role in this one yes. so far. I kind of like that he's just a background reactionary character to so many other characters, i.e. Swamp Thing. Yeah. Uh, 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 obviously, Martian Manhunter, which yeah, I didn't no, see that didn't one. See that, no. I guess it makes sense with all the blood magic stuff going mm-hmm. on, but still. Uh, I just like him being the reactionary, like, come on, guy, come, <laughs> come on. on. <laughs> I just wanted to get a pack of smokes, drink some hang, whiskey. Hang out with this demon lady. <laughs> yeah. I really had nothing else I wanted to do, and, and you guys keep doing all this crazy shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it was kind of cool that you made that giant whiskey tree over there in Scotland, though. Yeah. So I was kind of down with that one swamp thing, but all the rest of it, yeah. no. Just no. <laughs> I hope they find a way to bring back Mr. Biscuits. I know. I know. <laughs> but again, that is the best way for him to go. Yeah. It's about the the most the, uh, the rou- poetic the, way. The, arous- the arousing hand speech. <laughs> Uh, but that's it. That's all of our books for this episode. Uh, reminder to you guys go out there and buy these books. Maybe not particularly these issues, as we said. Yeah. It's coming up to a close here in the next month. So uh, go back and find trades you like. Pick up books of other stuff you like. Uh, use this as kind of a, oh, well, that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll check that out when it comes out in trade or catch up to it or go back to earlier in the run. You do what you have to do. Just remember what you buy dictates what gets published. So make sure you support what you like uh reminder again we are on hiatus for the month of may we will be back on june 5th and uh, next week i believe is our last episode as far as following the weekly books we are going to try to get a couple little things in there while we are away probably off topic i don't know what we're going to do we'll figure something out and go from there so next week more books brian why don't you tell the folks how they can contact us if they want to. Using the internet. Yes. Uh, preferably a keyboard of some sort, or mm-hmm. at least letters. If you put them in specific orders on the internet, uh, like maybe DCR Podcast, D-C-R-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. If you put them in that order, you'll find us. It's pretty easy. Yeah. And then you can put whatever other letters in order you want to, to yell at us and call us inept and stupid, and you're the Aquaman of podcasting. Oh. <laughs> Did we actually get that at one point? Yes, yes. We've gotten that before in the past. So. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> I, I did, too, because... Joke's on you. I, I, I was quite the fan of Aquaman <laughs> at that time, and meh. <laughs> uh, but if you want to send off your own versions of insults, please feel free to do so at DZR Podcast anywhere out on the Intar webs. Uh, do you have anything you want to chat about before we take nope. off? Shaking heads do not make noises. Nope, I'm good. Nope, oh, right. I said so, nope. All right, I didn't hear you. I was talking. You no. have to wait for me to finish speaking, and then you respond. A pod- it's a podcast. We got to be talking over each other. Oh, I didn't. I thought that was how it worked. I didn't know that. I can. I can try harder next time. Okay, you better. Maybe in one of our you better off do it shows, next time. <laughs> in one of our off-topic shows. That's all I'll do is just talk over people the entire time. Maybe I'll just talk about Warcraft the entire time or maybe. Warhammer 40k. <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe. Maybe. If only I had something to talk about. <laughs> uh, so from all of us here, everyone, enjoy your books, enjoy your week, enjoy your lives, and we're going to talk to you next week. Bye.